Good morning, modern standards. It's 10 degrees out, so it's a perfect day to stay inside, bake some cookies, make some kombucha, make some sauerkraut, and a few other things. We've been getting a lot of people asking us lately in emails and Facebook messages about how we make our kombucha. Well, we make it, and we're going to show you how we make it, but we're not the professional. We're still learning how to make our own kombucha and what flavors we like and how we like it along with our sauerkraut. But our go-to for our kombucha has been the Big Book of Kombucha by Kombucha Mama. We were at the Mother Earth News Fair, I believe it was June of last year, May or June of last year, and we got to listen to Hannah Crumb talk, and I'll put a link to that video right here. We videotaped it and we got it on our YouTube channel. So we're still learning and trying and failing and trying and experimenting with kombucha, so we're going to show you how we do it today. If you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments down below. Let's get to it. So the girls last night made a batch of blueberry kombucha. We're gonna let it sit in the bottles for two to three days, do its second ferment, and then we'll put it in the fridge or the cave. I'll put a link to our Amazon store in the description down below, and in that store I'll have a link for the book. Cookies are ready. After our tea has steeped for a few minutes, I can take out the tea bags. And then you gotta add a cup of sugar for every gallon of tea you're making. You need to make a sweet tea, and this is what the SCOBY ferments on. You wanna make sure you use non chlorinated water. We have a artesian well here so we have nice clean natural water. Just want to stir it up and make sure all that sugar dissolves. Now before we add our tea to our SCOBY liquid we gotta let it cool down to room temperature. We do a continuous brew so we always have about a third to half a container full of sweet tea that's fermenting so that's a little bit our method's a little bit different than if you're just gonna be brewing a first batch. So if you're new to kombucha, trust your gut and start off by drinking a little bit at a time. If you're just starting off with your first batch of kombucha, you're gonna put your scoby into your tea. We have the continuous brew, so we just slowly pour it over. Now we're going to start on making some sauerkraut. First we want to take off any bad wilted leaves off of our cabbage. We're using red cabbage because I think it looks pretty when we turn it into sauerkraut. And then we're going to rinse off our heads. Now we want to quarter up the cabbage and cut out the core. 
Okay, I don't have muscles for that. You do. I just like the way that looks. It looks so pretty. A map. Wait. Now we're gonna cut into thin quarter inch strips. And it does stain like beets. I can't do this anymore. <gasps> you want one tablespoon of sea salt per cabbage head. So we got about one head in there cut up right now. I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of salt in there. Did you already grow anywhere? I did part of mine. And we'll cut up the other one. These big bowls from when we had the pig harvesting class sure come in handy. That's the thing, once you get into doing all this kind of food and cooking and fun stuff, once you buy the equipment for different processes, you can use it for so many other things. So this is new to us too. This is. But it's fun Really new to me because I... Wasn't around when you did last time. No. So we just want to cover it all with salt. And then we gotta let it sit for 15 minutes and let the juices flow. It only takes 15 minutes for the juices to flow. For the first part. How long did your hands stay purple last time? I don't remember. It's not very long. It washes off. I don't remember seeing your hands purple last That's time. That's what I'm saying. It washes off pretty. You ready to get out some frustration? I need one of that. <laughs> Now you need to mash, knead, twist, shred this somehow. You want to get the juices flowing. But the purple comes right off. Yeah, mine didn't yet. Okay, I'm not So you just want to get the water flowing. So I want to do this for like eight to ten okay. minutes. You can. Mom, I would take you with me. You say if you have a mallet, you could use a mallet, but I don't got one. I think that'd make a lot of noise. Maybe have a wooden one. Have to invest in one. Have to invest in a wooden mallet. You think you could do it with your hands? Yeah, why don't you put it in your kitchen? Are you put it in your kitchen? I wonder if you could. Oh. You don't one. want to rip it apart, though, do you? No, but I don't think the paddle would rip it apart. Clean your hands. Yes. So there's no right way or wrong way of doing it. Just mm -hmm. mash it. That's what it says. And you need it. Yep. You can put it in your feet. You could. If you want your feet to use some bacteria in there. But the more you do it, the more liquid you get out. And that's what you want to do. You want to get... Does it look like fun? Mm -hmm. and then we get purple hands. Um, you're tripping on me. It's, it's like a purple Hulk snack. You know the Hulk. It's a purple Hulk. It's purple Hulk instead of green Hulk. Mm -hmm. Pack it down and get your ear pockets out. Like really poke? Not like really, really, but just pack it. Like that? Yep. Or more. That's good. Go for it. You think you can fit this all in one jar? Last time, one cabbage didn't even fall half. So, so it should fit in one jar. It should fit in one jar. That's why I got two cabbages this time. If there's any left over, we can give it to the pigs or the chickens. So two heads of cabbage are like the perfect size for a gallon jug. Look at that beautiful. Oh, that looks so 
purple liquid. Fake. Looks neon y. That's the good stuff. Now we need to make a brine. We have four cups of water to one tablespoon of salt. We want to use a good high quality salt. Non-iodine. No iodine. All right, give that a good stir. Can't stir too good, it'll fling over the sides. <laughs> We're using the Prairie Homesteads recipe. I'll put a link to that in the description down below. All right, ready to make a mess? Mm -hmm. Look at those hands. You want to hear I know, these things are terrible. We have our glass weights Keep we're going to put in yep. to keep the cabbage down. We gotta leave from our Mhm. Perfect. What do you think? We're gonna put an airlock in ours. You can just leave your cover loose or burp your cover. We, I recommend doing it this way. You don't Why? have to worry about because you don't have to worry about it breathing. It can bubble its way out. Or if you're having the cover on, you have to remember to burp it. Or if you leave it loose, you gotta worry about stuff, something getting but in this there. This one's fine. This one's fine. And then you store it away from your kombucha. Store it at least four feet from your kombucha. Or any other. Or any other ferments you have going on. Seven to ten days, and some people say they let theirs go for a month, all the way up to a year fermenting. I've never done that, but they say and it you tastes need to better. Just those in there. Yeah, you leave them in there until you. And they're fine. Done fermenting. Yep, so it holds everything down and keeps the cabbage from coming to the top. Because if your cabbage comes to the top, it's going to oxidize and get mold on it. And then these bubbles will come out. Mm -hmm. The air is going to come out. And not a lot, but a little bit. Mm -hmm. That was fun. We'll get to make, which will be hopefully soon to be good sauerkraut. Huh? We girls flavored the kombucha last night. And then today we made some more tea for it. And we got to make some chocolate chip cookies to bring over to our friend's house for dinner tonight. See if you'd invite us over for dinner every once in a while. We bring some chocolate chip cookies with us, right? Maybe. <laughs> Olivia wants to eat them, huh? <laughs> Thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Women the Acres, a guide to running homesteading, self sufficiency, and freedom. Can you smell all the good food I got in the bucket for you? Huh? Huh? Wow, your hand is purple. Mm-hmm. It's kind of fun.